From the 600 ESPN El Paso River Oaks Property Schoolyard Sports Studio, here's Steve Kaplowitz and Adrian Broadus. Welcome back, everybody. Congratulations to the Boston Celtics. Championship number 18, they now pass the Lakers. They took care of business last night in the game you heard right here on 600 ESPN El Paso. How nice. The only game we could air turns out to be the clincher. There you go. We were not able to air the other four because of Chihuahua's baseball. The stars aligned perfectly. We had last night's game on and gave you a chance to hear the Celtics win championship number 18. Jalen Brown, to no surprise, is your MVP, and the NBA season is now officially over until the start of the draft and free agency and the offseason. And now we've got one left, boys. We have the NHL Stanley Cup Finals, which means... The Florida Panthers could do the same thing to the Oilers tonight that the Celtics did to the Mavs, and that is clinch the championship on their home ice in front of their home fans. 6 o'clock, ABC, that will air as we get going officially here on the program. Alberto Urueta is back with us along with Michael Plundo, along with Utep Zay, and of course, the man you heard a moment ago, Adrian Broaddus. I'm Steve Kaplow. It's back with you for two and a half hours today as we get you right up till 6.30. And then it's going to be Chihuahua's baseball, El Paso and Sugarland, the Space Cowboys, doing battle tonight and every night for the next six nights, starting at 6.30 tonight here on 600 ESPN El Paso with the voice of your El Paso Chihuahuas, the one and only Tim Haggerty. So as you might imagine, Adrian, we are busy today. We got a lot to cover, a lot to talk about, but... The Celtics did exactly what we thought they would. They blew out the Mavs. This game was never close. And, uh, in fact, it was uh, a game that, uh, unless you're really a Celtics fan, you probably turned it off uh, somewhere in the uh, second quarter or even the second half because you realized that uh, the the game was over. Yeah, I was trying to find reasons to watch the entire second half. I was just telling the guys here. You know, the interesting part about this matchup was I I felt like Celtics came in with a ton of energy. That wasn't uh, a shocker right there. They're playing at TD Garden with all the emotion right there. But they get the spark from all their supporting cast members. Uh, The crowd goes crazy when Kristaps Sporzingis checks in briefly and he was balling out. Al Horford looking for his first ring. He just won it. He was getting a lot of juice from the crowd. How about Peyton Pritchard? The, you mentioned it wasn't really close. Uh, that is exactly right. At one point, right before half, I thought, hey, Mavs could maybe stage a comeback. They cut it to uh, 16 points with a two-pointer uh, with under 30 seconds left. Peyton Pritchard, actually, forget that. It was under 10 seconds left. Peyton Pritchard grabs the ball on the inbound. You know it was going to him. He takes all of their uh, you know, halftime shots right before they go to the break, and he hits a buzzer beater uh, right before halftime to make it a 19-point game at the half. And that's pretty much it right there. Boston was the better team. Um, Jalen Brown deserved the MVP. Drew Holiday, credit to him. He played a fantastic finals. He could have also been finals MVP. Really liked what we saw from guys like Derek White, who's, who are like blocking shots and not necessarily being an offensive guy, but really doing all the dirty things to win. Uh, I did not give this uh, Celtics team a lot of credit throughout this finals stretch, but they deserve all of it. They fell short to seasons ago against the Warriors and this time around they're on top they they win the finals deservingly so that's right deservingly so is a good way to put it and uh you're 100% correct I mean got to realize something okay even though the Celtics have 18 championships right 18 think about this okay this was let's see uh two let's see here two three four Five. I think this is only their fifth championship since 1976. That sounds right. I mean, this is their first since 08, and that's the last time you can really remember a previous nucleus uh, for the Celtics being that relevant with the nucleus of Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, uh, Ray Allen. We love that nucleus right there, and Rajon Rondo. But once that era ended in the early 2010s yeah. this nucleus that's intact right now was birthed i mean it was well, drafting jason tatum drafting jalen brown i think i sh- should be fifth since 81 because they won in 81 with fitch that's when they beat the rockets in six okay they won again in 84 when they beat the lakers with casey jones two years later they beat the rockets in 86 again so they win in 81 and 86 over the rockets they beat the lakers in 84 
then they don't win another championship uh, until 08 and then uh, this one. So you think about it, their first title since 2008 when Doc Rivers was a head coach and Paul Pierce was your MVP. Meanwhile, like the amazing thing to me is, okay, so since 81, you look at the Lakers, right? They won in 82, 85, 87, 88, 2000, 2001, 2002, and then 2009, 2010, and 2020. I mean, that's a ton. The Lakers, Lakers have done all, you know, they've done a lot of their damage in the last 45 years, whereas the Celtics, they've only won five. So they did their damage in the 50s and 60s. And they had some in the 70s. They won at 74 and 76. So we shouldn't make a note that, you know, they they were still um, championship worthy in the mid-70s when Tommy Heinsohn was coaching them and John Havlicek and uh, JoJo White were winning uh, MVPs. But really, you know, the the Lakers have been the, the more dominant of the two franchises over the last 40-plus years. But so many Celtics fans like Luis and people that remember those 60s dynasties and remember all the championships and the banners they were hanging out at the Boston Garden in those days. So, look, the Lakers and Celtics are the two most storied franchises in the history of the NBA. Celtics back on top. I was happy for them yesterday, uh, despite being a Knicks fan, because, again, uh, they are, uh, whether you like them or hate them, one of the legendary teams in the history of professional sports. Not just NBA, professional sports. You know, I'd also say what a run for, again, the city of Boston. I'm saying this. Man, I mean, can can we have a different city out there that has this kind of luck? I mean, Red Sox winning in 2018, which, by the way, might see a dry spell for titles going to Boston on the baseball side of things for maybe the next decade or so. Uh, Patriots, 14, 16, 18. Those are just the recent ones right there for what they did and how they uh, had a uh, great, great run of Super Bowls going their way. And then the Bruins in 2011. So, I mean, Boston's really been the title town over the last uh, I would say 15 years, really. Um, and I don't, you know, every year, wow. if it's not the, if it's not, you know, the Celtics, it's the Patriots and, you know, so on and so forth. Celtics have only lost five times in the NBA Finals. In contrast, the Lakers have lost 15 times in the NBA Finals. So the Lakers have been to the NBA Finals 32 times in their history. 32 times. It's amazing. The Celtics have been 23. So nobody has more trips to the NBA Finals than the Lakers. Uh, than the Lakers okay? Um, and if you wanted to know who is third after that, Golden State. Golden State has 12 appearances and seven championships. Is Cleveland in the top five there? Uh, are they? Where are they at? No. Cleveland has one title, five appearances. In okay, fact, makes sense. The Cav- and the Cavs are all recent. You know, they've lost in the NBA title in 2007, 15, 17, and 18. Okay? I just lumped LeBron into, like, you the did. Cleveland <laughs> history you right did. there. I, mean, I was, like, trying to compare uh, LeBron's title runs. I think LeBron's at 10, so that, that's, I mean, he's almost, how many more franchises does oh, he yeah. have as far as finals appearances? Oh, that's true. I mean, you got to realize that there are only a handful of teams with more than, than uh, three NBA titles. Spurs have five. Bulls have six. Warriors have seven. Lakers have 17. Celtics have 18. And in case you're wondering who has three, Miami, Detroit, and the Sixers. Detroit, all thanks to, uh, well, the bad boys, and then in 04. And then most of the uh, Pistons' losses came in the 50s when they were the Fort Wayne Pistons. And then later on in 88 with the bad boys when they lost. And then 05 uh, when they lost. So realistically, those are your franchises. And the Sixers, the Sixers are fun because they haven't won a last, their last NBA championship was 1983. They won in 55 and 67. And then, and I believe they were the Philadelphia, I think they were the Warriors in 55. In 67, they were probably, then they were the San Francisco Warriors, all right? So, yeah, it's a little confusing. Actually, in, uh, yeah, so in, in, in 55, they were, 56, I should say, they were the Philadelphia Warriors. 
Then they became the San Francisco Warriors. Now, obviously, the Golden State Warriors. It's wait. It's a lot. It's it's very confusing. So you're telling me right now, LeBron has more Finals appearances than the Sixers do as a franchise, the Knicks oh, do yeah. as a franchise, the Pistons, the Heat, and the mm. Bulls. No, the, the Knicks have the Knicks have eight appearances in the NBA title. Eight, but a lot of them were years ago. Like they they went in uh, in fifty one, fifty two, and fifty three. Lost all three. Then they win in 70, lose in 72, win in 73, lose in 94, and lose in 99. So the Knicks have been to the finals eight times. They've just won twice. So LeBron's been 10 times. So he's been, LeBron has been there more than the Knicks have been as an entire franchise. Let's put it this way LeBron has been to the NBA finals more than uh, every team but three. Okay, that's insane. Every team in the NBA but three: Warriors, Lakers, Celtics. Other than that, he tops them all. Wow, there's there's a good LeBron case right there. And if you're wondering who has never been to the NBA Finals, there's five franchises: Hornets, Clippers, Grizzlies, T Wolves, Pelicans. That's it. Wow, the Clippers of the last 10 years, how much they've committed to resources around that team, and they could not make a finals, not even an appearance. That's a disgrace. OKC, um, they've made the finals once, but uh, but they lost, obviously. That was against the Heat when you know it was the baby uh, Thunder team, and then they lost against Miami. So yep. uh, that's their only finals appearance. They, they, might come, they might go back to the finals with this current nucleus that they have led by SGA. It's so true. It is, uh, you know, and again, that's a fun part about the NBA as we start things off here on this uh, Tuesday edition of the program. 505-6009, our telephone number. Alberto, uh, no real surprise yesterday. I mean, we all thought it was going to be Boston, although Adrian picked with his heart, not with his head. He said Dallas, but we all kind of had a feeling this would happen. Yeah, the Celtics uh, were the were the superior team all season, and although they faced a little to no adversity coming on to the finals, they 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 rallied together and they get it done. So yeah, it's a disappointing game if you were a basketball fan. Though it just wasn't a close game there, it just wasn't a close game there at the end. So yeah, it was, it was a little disappointing. I definitely turned it off, but I'm glad they got a, a win. And you know what? Something I haven't heard you guys mention is I really liked uh, Jason Tatum's yep. um, MVP speech. You know, he kind of credits the guy that didn't have the finals. I know he wanted, and, and I'm sure that that was on the forefront of his mind all night. And it'll be Jalen Brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jalen Brown. It'll be on the forefront of his head uh, till the next season. So, just to kind of give credit to that guy, that's really cool. All right, let's go to the phones. I want to hear what kind of conspiracy theory Gator Richard has for us today. Quarter past as we get going on the program. Uh, go Gators! What's going on? Go Gators! How about them Gator baseball, man? I'm telling you, they've been fun. They've been fun. They could win it all. Yeah, well, they're still in it. They they, they weren't supposed to be there, but. Unlike last year where they uh, should have done the mercy kill, but they uh, let them play like uh, three more innings and like batted themselves out of it, I guess. I don't know how to describe that. What, kind anyhow, of, what, what do you have for us today? Let's, let's hear. All right. So I called it Boston and Five. Ask Adrian. I sent him a text. Yep. And I said it on the air, so... I don't know. Do you feel vindicated? Anyhow, Do you feel good uh, about yourself knowing you called it the way it happened? Well, not really, because that game four was kind of embarrassing. Yeah, it was. I mean, I mean you know, to lose lose by 40 and then come back and, you know, smoke on the next game just so they could play at home. And, and you say that that's not a conspiracy to, you know, milk one more game out of these finals. But it is what it is, I guess. There you go. Hey, so I, I did have a question. Did you see what Otani did yesterday? You talking about the home run? Yeah. Yeah. Two home runs. Yeah, I, I saw those. Yeah. I mean, look, he's a machine, man. He is a machine. There's no other way to put it. And, you know? and that second one didn't even look like he, he got all of it either. It looked like it was kind of like, you know, like a half swing and it still went like 400 yards. Uh, feet. 400 feet. Now, if, if, let me tell you something. If he had a ball, if he had a ball four hundred yards, we'd be talking about that for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I meant. Come I on, do. Steve. I do. All right, man. Hey, so um, I did want to ask you something. Are we going to do the lunch thing like any time this this year, or are we going to keep talking about it? 
Uh, Adrian, are we going to do the lunchtime? Yeah, uh, we got to make it happen. Yeah. He's, he hits me up like morning of, though, Steve. So I, I, we got to get a little bit of planning. Oh. <laughs> All right. All right. Hey, so hey, we could do it like July 3rd if you want. Or, you know, like that's not the day of. That's you know, July 3rd is out. like two and a half weeks from now. What do you have? You have, you have all plans until then? We can't go sooner? Yeah, we can go sooner. I'm All just right. saying. All right, listen. Adrian, coordinated with Gator Richard. He owes us anyway. Okay, we so, got a couple friends here, Gator Richard. We got Michael Plundo. We got Alberto Retta. Oh, my God. We got Zay Galindo. You're going to make him buy all five people <laughs> lunch? Are you yeah. serious? Yeah, bring young Sheldon, too. Oh, yeah. No, uh, Lane's out of town. You're lucky. Lane's out. So, And he's got an appetite. Yeah, he, we'll get him That kid can eat. Then. Yeah, that kid can eat. So be careful with him. Um, I'm just telling you, he's got a big appetite. But okay, we'll plan it. We'll go from there. Looking forward to it. Appreciate the phone call. Gator Richard getting us going here, 18 past the hour. Andy is back from the El Paso Chihuahuas. He will give us the lowdown on the homestand, which starts uh, in about two hours and uh, 15 minutes. So we'll do that right after Charlie One, who's back with traffic. Got to join the party here. We got Alberto, we got Andy, you, we got the whole crew in the back. I we mean, do. It, we're, it's a whole party again today. I love it. And you were at the last homestand on the craziest day ever, the 15 to 1 comeback win. That's right. I was just telling Andy, like, I can't believe that is probably the best baseball game I'll ever go and see. 15 runs in the comeback, end up winning 17 16. It doesn't get better than that. What would the college football equivalent be of a 15 to 1 come from behind win? Honestly, that's got to be somewhere in the realm of like being down 14 to 50 in like the starting, you know, going into the second half, which would be barely enough time to even get all that time back. You know yeah. what I mean? That That's honestly how drastic it probably is. Yeah, that would be kind of crazy because the interesting thing is in baseball, you could get behind 15 to one in like the third inning and still have six innings to come back. But in football, if you're down, let's say 45 to, to three in the second quarter, it's going to be very difficult to try to come back and win. Yeah, you have to be almost perfect because of the time limit. You know, baseball doesn't have that, but, I mean, they strung together runs that inning, and I guess you could say that was their time crunch. They did it all in one hit. No doubt. I mean, Andy, you, you think about it. You can't you can't score unlimited touchdowns uh, on one possession. You could, The most you can get is seven. Or in baseball, you could score as many times as you want. That's right. Yeah, that, that clock just keeps ticking in football. you got to keep, keep mind of that, so. Did you hear about the new uh, rule today, by the way, that's coming around AAA involving uh, the automatic balls and strikes? I did not. I believe it's starting uh, June. i got to double-check if it's the 23rd or the 25th. It's probably the 25th because the 23rd is the f- through the first half of the season. Okay. So starting in the t- on the 25th of June, make sure. Yes, that is right. All AAA, uh, all AAA baseball games will use – the automated ball strike challenge system as opposed to full ABS, which had been used for half the week. Got it. So okay, apparently, so- yeah, Major League Baseball found that fans and players, they like the challenges more than just the fully automated ABS. So now there will always be essentially balls and strikes called with the challenge system of the three challenges in place for every single game for those six-game series starting uh, on the 25th of June. Yeah, so that means I guess we're adopting the Friday, Saturday, Sunday rules. Yes. Which I agree with, actually. I love the human element of the umpire, and then you have to challenge it if you disagree. Or- and it's and it's kind of interesting also. I think the you know, I think the fans like it. I'll be honest with you. I think the fans enjoy it because they get to hear the umpire say they're challenging the call. They get to look on the video board and see the, the, the pitch, where it's located, seeing exactly if it's a ball or a strike. And even though it takes about an extra 15 seconds or so for the challenge to take place, that computerized way of showing the ball, fans dig that more than knowing that the umpire is calling it exactly the way it should be called based on a computer or robot ump. Yeah, I love it. I'd be very curious to see when it gets to MLB, if it ever does. Oh, they're saying by 2026. Is that right? Yes. Wow. Challenges could take place starting 2026. That's sooner than I would have thought, actually. Yeah. Well, we'll see. But, but the beauty of Major League Baseball is they kind of use AAA as a testing ground. Yeah, that's right. And I, I do agree with the... The, the current system, so I'm excited that we're fully adopting that uh, starting on the 25th. Excellent. All right, so we have Miles Morales' bobblehead giveaway on Friday. And then Saturday, 
We're doing the Fireworks Spectacular. These are all 635 games, by the way, up until Sunday, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But the Fireworks Show will be rock and roll That's this right. weekend. Yeah, we got Kiss, ACDC, some Stones in there. It's going to be a really great show, and of course, rock and roll really lends itself to some fireworks, so we're going to have some big pops. It's going to be a good show. Is that supposed to be Slash uh, as Chico? Is that the <laughs> idea? Because he has the hat, the sunglasses. It looks like uh, he, he kind of he's got a little tattoo of the chihuahuas on his. Is that supposed to be the Slash theme? I'll let you interpret that. Did you design it? I did not, no. Uh, Eileen Cerna, a great graphic designer, she does a lot of the artwork for us at the ballpark. But uh, You have seen it, correct? Yes, I have seen it. Okay. Um, That's awesome. But yeah. uh, we uh, can't, I guess, explicitly say it was Slash. because. Uh, well, yeah, he'll sue you. So, yeah. So you that's, just want, a rock, uh, that's just rock no, that's and roll all. Chico. You don't want, uh, <laughs> you don't want uh, a lawsuit with uh, Slash, but I do like it. I do think it's, uh, it's definitely interesting. So that'll be on Saturday with the Rock and Roll Fireworks show right after the ball game, And then... Last game of the series will be Sunday. It's Bark at the Park Night as well. Uh, that's always a fun one. Is this the second Bark at the Park Night of Correct. the season? Correct, yeah. Second of four or five, I believe. Um, limited number of these promotions. Just um, inviting all of our fans to come on out to the ballpark. Bring man's best friend to our nation's pastime. There are great events. Um, entry for all dogs has to be at the Missouri Gate. That's in beyond the left center field. Um, and then uh, you just have to have your updated vaccinations and shot records, and we'll be good to go. Excellent. EPChihuahuas.com for tickets. That's EPChihuahuas.com. By the way, we should probably make this mention now. If you want to go to the July 4th fireworks shows on the 3rd and the 4th, because there's two nights, don't wait till it's too late. Buy your tickets now, because that is also going to be a very special celebration as we get ready for Independence Day. Yeah, those are very sought-after nights for El Pasoans. So, yeah, we have two shows, July 3rd and July 4th. Um, going to be great. we got an extended show on the 4th, of course, to celebrate Independence Day. Um, but like Steve said, get your tickets now. It's, it's imperative that you do so, because those are going fast. Have we released yet the uh, Independence Day July 4th caps, or is that still waiting to come out? No, we, we have those ready to go. Um, stay tuned to our social media. We'll be announcing both the hat and the process of how you can get that hat, as well as our auction jersey. The team is going to wear uh, a specialty Stars and Stripes jersey on the 3rd and the 4th that will raise money for the El Paso Chihuahuas Foundation. Okay, give me uh, without giving us details, and I already have an idea what the hats are going to look like because I've seen the big league caps, so that kind of gives me an idea. If you follow Major League Baseball, you realize that minor league kind of mirrors the majors, so we know what that's like. As far as the jerseys, those I have not yet seen. Uh, give me your thoughts and input on them. Will these? Uh, you, you always we always see every year something different. Uh, how about this year's version? Yeah, uh, of course, red, white, and blue. Uh, but boy, you are really going out on a limb today. <laughs> Holy we smokes! Have, Andy. We have we have a special logo that was created for this one. It's not going to match the hat because New Era designs those hats. But there's a special logo on the jersey that we're pretty pumped about. Is this logo designed throughout all of minor league baseball, or is this specifically done by the Chihuahuas? Specifically done by the Chihuahuas. It's our deal. Look at you! Yeah. You said screw baseball. We're doing our <laughs> own thing, and we're going to do something completely different for all of our fans. And that's it's part of the fun. That's what it's about, right? Yeah, we're pumped up. It's going to be a very, very cool uh, jersey. And, uh, yeah, it'll be up for auction. And, uh, yeah, you'll be able to get those in a couple of weeks once we get closer and closer to the, uh, to the 4th of July. All right. Terrific stuff. Great to see you. Thanks, Steve. Thank you for coming by. And uh, get those tickets now uh, starting tonight because we have six nights of baseball, 635 first pitch, and then 605 on Sunday, all night games with Euro Paso Chihuahuas. We'll see you guys at the ballpark. There he is. He's Andy Emfel. Bill is out right now. Uh, starting this Friday, uh, $50 to Chelitos for just $25. Folks. There are two locations at Chilitos. Uh, first, there's 2400 North Mesa Street, and then the downtown location at 115 North Mesa. Uh, we were lucky enough today to go to Chilitos. And Adrian, who has frequented the downtown location, um, all I could tell you is this. We ate and ate and ate and ate. And it started with some incredible appetizers that they brought out for us. That were uh, absolutely fantastic. In fact, you think about uh, what we ate a little while ago, Adrian. A lot of great seafood. Terrific uh, shrimp cocktail was brought out. Then we went to the tacos. 
Then there were the burgers, the fries. My goodness gracious. Um, the food was absolutely outstanding. This is going to be a terrific dining deal come Friday. Yeah, I love Chelitos. Huge fan. Uh, Edgar, big shout out to him and the great team out there. They did a wonderful job uh, with us uh, earlier today. The appetizers with the ceviche, Steve, and then the aguachiles. I love those. The green aguachiles were my favorite. Then we got the al pastor tacos that were fantastic. That's the ones that I dove into. I had a chance to try their torta, which was outstanding. And then we washed it off with uh, one of their agua frescas, which I brought one to Alberto because he didn't get the invite today. Uh, and I felt bad for him, so I ended up getting him uh, our fresca so he could save her a little bit. Now, Kate didn't get the invite today, and uh, neither did Michael Plundo today. It was just for the uh, regular staffer, so that's what that's happened. Right. Uh, by the way, Alberto, how was that uh, agua fresca? It was really good. It was super refreshing, and I came in, like, nice. burning up from the heat, so it was... Just so it what took. I so it took the. Jo- it did the job for yes, you. Yes, yes, it hydrated me perfectly. Fantastic, Kate. I know you have been fortunate enough to go with us on some of these dining deal trips. We will get you to another one sooner rather than later. But uh, this is definitely one of those that you're going to want to put on your hit list, especially because it's right across the street from campus. I think I'm going to. I, I definitely will. I'm looking at the pictures as they're scrolling across your screen right now, and they look really good. But I've been on – actually, I went on my own expedition in food in El Paso the other day, and after two years of living in El Paso, I finally had Chico's Tacos. Hey! Yeah. Took you two years. It took me a long time. It took me a long time. I, I, I will say it was good, but I think I would be uh, more interested in going right here to this dining deal as I'm looking across the pictures on your screen. Chilitos is the way to go. I'm happy you said that. And the best part is this, okay? I know you're a student. I know you're on a budget. The idea of getting $50 to Chilitos for 25 bucks, where you can go treat some of your teammates and then all of you guys go together and just chow down, that's the idea. That's the whole concept of what makes this dining deal so great. It sounds perfect. It sounds perfect for football players, and it sounds perfect for me right now. As as hungry as I am, Steve, you better take these images off your screen because I'm starting to salivate over here. I will. I hey, will. guys, they also offer a lunch special. This is actually the UTEP location, so there you go. I'm a special plug for you, Cade. Right across campus for you. Awa Fresca included 10 11 to 3 uh, on weekdays. So that is their lunch special that they're running right now. And they've got $6 Burger Tuesdays. They brought out the Junior Burger to us, Cade. And that Junior Burger is not a Junior Burger. That was three patties right there. It was outstanding. And they even got a Burger Challenge that's going viral on social media, too. Yeah, the Burger Challenge is uh, definitely something we should tell Kate about. So there it is. You got nine patties. You have nine slices of American cheese, nine slices of provolone cheese. You've got a bucket. of. You have the fries all around it. It's about a three-pound uh, meal. And then you got to finish that and also a soda pop in a half an hour. Otherwise, it's 45 bucks. That's crazy. I'm looking at this right now, and I, I wasn't as jealous of not being able to go this time. But as I continue to look at these, I'm starting to get more and more jealous that I wasn't there. Now, uh, I will ask you this question. Could you take care of this burger challenge and knock down the nine patties and fries and a soda in a half an hour? I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm looking at that and... I would have to be real, oh, real hungry. Steve. Eighteen slices of bacon. No, no, yes. no, 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 no. Cade, no. if you had to phone a friend, who's who's doing this one? Well, Otis Pitts, right? Because he thinks he can eat 125 wings. Oh yeah. So uh, I'm gonna have to phone Otis Pitts on this one. But Pitts said two hours for the wings. This is a 30 minute job for the burger. Right. In fact, um, you know who else tried doing this? Who couldn't? Uh, who couldn't uh, get it done? But he got it. He tried anyway. Who? Uh, I'm gonna give you a hint. You hear him on this radio show, but he's not with this radio station. He is an anchor for KVIA television. Colin. Paul C. Oh, Paul. Yes. Paul C. Cala tried. Paul and tried this? Yeah, Paul, I just saw it on his Instagram. Paul ate the burger. He finished Credit the burger in wow. 30 minutes, but he couldn't finish the fries. I'm looking in at fact, Alberto I get showing t- me right now, actually, as we speak. We need to get some post game from Paul Cicala on this on this challenge, don't you think? We think need so. uh, we need to get Cicala on the show and get a little uh, get a little uh, thoughts on on this thing. And I want to know what kind of damage that did to his stomach afterwards, don't you? Yeah, I think we need a, a full rundown, full breakdown from Paul Cicala. Love the video. Della Story did a great job with him as well. Uh, it was an excellent video uh, that we got a chance to check out. Paul almost had it. I would have just downed yep. the fries, man. 
I know. He was so close. But, I mean, that's, that's the strategy. Do you eat the fries first and then go to the burger? Or do you have that burger first and hope you have enough room for the fries? I don't know. Plundo, could you, uh, could you take care of that burger challenge? Absolutely not. I need more time than 30 minutes. Okay. That's, but if you had an hour, could you do it? Um, I think an hour I could do it. I think oh. an hour is more fair. Interesting. Interesting. The time limit doesn't scare me as much. It's more the amount of food. That's sure. what I was going to say. And you are a student athlete who is supposed to take massive calories because you burn them so fast and eat that all the time. Right. I, I usually eat food very fast, and I don't know if I can get all that down, Steve. I mean, that's yeah, a lot. I'm going to need to talk to Paul and see what he said afterward. I think that's yeah. going to be a good uh, good postgame analysis. Chelitos, folks, this Friday, dining deals, $50 for just $25. bucks. we will come back. Hour number two is next right here at 600 ESPN El Paso. Come back. Full house. We've got Cade McConnell hanging out. Alberto Duetta here. Michael Plundo. Utep Zay. Adrian Broadus. I'm Steve Kaplow. It's with you. Well, we're not getting Paul Cicala for at least 30 minutes. I had no idea that they do 4, 5, and 6 o'clock newscasts. God, it's like our show. They, I mean, they're on forever. So they just did an hour newscast. They're following up with another 30-minute cast. And they go back at 6. It's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of news, boys. So maybe we'll be lucky enough to get Sikala at the 5.30 time to talk about that burger challenge. I'm looking forward to it, man. we got to hear from himself. I'm looking forward to it also. Um, meanwhile, Esteban gets in on the program. Rajan Rondo is my favorite all-time NBA player. So he loved Rajan Rondo. While Noah Guerrero uh, gets in on Twitter and X, not much else the critics can say about this Celtics team anymore. They played with the pressure of being heavy favorites all season long, and it was just dominance from start to finish. Not to mention they will bring back this exact same team next season. That comes from at the Noah underscore G hey, here on the show. I'll say this about that. With Jalen Brown winning the finals MVP – um, and you have somebody like Jason Tatum, maybe that kind of gives him, you know, a little carrot kind of dangling in this situation where he's got to go out and, hey, I want to chase this. I want to get another title, and I want to be the finals MVP this time around. Uh, Tatum didn't have the best finals stretch here against the Mavs. Uh, no, he didn't, but didn't need to. You're right. That was that was kind of interesting. I mean, Jalen Brown played lights out. By the way, I don't know about you, but I thought that was the most ridiculous contract he signed during the offseason and thought that was a, you know just an insane amount of money to give a guy that, quite frankly, I didn't know if he would be up to the challenge. Well, he's showing us right now that uh, that's the best investment Boston made this offseason. Well, every offseason it was like, who could we trade Jalen Brown for if yeah. you were Boston? It was like one, one uh, offseason it was like the Kawhi sweet, sweepstakes. Could Jalen Brown be the trade chip to get Kawhi Leonard away from the Toronto Raptors? Or, you know, another offseason – or. Actually, that was the San Antonio Spurs, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, another offseason, it was like Paul George. Can they use uh, Jalen Brown to get Paul George in a trade? So he has been subject of so many trade uh, discussions, uh, let alone being a superstar on this team, yet he gets and breaks the bank, and he delivers at the highest level in the NBA Finals. They you know, they didn't really need a star. They all kind of played uh, like a true team this time around, and I loved how they developed it. They did it through the draft. They didn't do it through buying all these stars. They acquired some of them through trades like Porzingis and Holiday, who ended up being difference makers for them. But they really had a grassroots team built uh, through the draft. I feel like the days of buying talent are over. I do. I feel like, other than Miami, you can look back and say that most of the champions we've seen in the NBA over the last 15 years have all been teams that have been put together uh, the right way. And the idea of the super teams are gone. And I feel like the one team that ended that for the NBA, the Brooklyn Nets. I do. When Brooklyn tried to put together that super team and thought they had it, when Durant and all them joined up, and that just imploded worse than ever. Um, I feel like the rest of the NBA took notice and said, you know what? Eh, that might not be the way to do it anymore. That's it. Well, you know what? Let's just build it through the draft. Let's build it through free agency. Let's build it the right way versus trying to do, uh, you know, let, let, let best friends play together and see if that works out. 
It was like the start of the end, right? I mean, it was the start of the end of the super teams. Now, uh, the other super teams that are trying to be assembled that haven't worked out. You can look at the Phoenix Suns. That's Devin Booker, Kevin yep. Durant, and they just acquired Bradley Beal last offseason. That didn't work out. And so now these multiple examples are piling up of not working out. It's role players that make it happen. It's guys like Derek White who are going to block shots and do the dirty work for you uh, that are going to make it happen. I, I also like some of the role players that Dallas has on their team. They're just not as experienced as some of those role players at the Celtics had. No, you're right. But you look at Dallas, uh, that is not a super team. Uh, the Celtics were not put together like just that. The Denver Nuggets were not put together as a super team. Um, and then you can look at some of the others that we've seen over the years. Milwaukee, no. Oh, well, I don't know. That's the one where, hey, they go all in on Damian Lillard this past offseason. I'm not saying a super team, but they well, may have tried to have an iteration of some of these other teams. And to your point, Steve, it didn't really work out this past year. I was talking about the 2021 Milwaukee Bucks winning the NBA title. Oh, definitely. That team is all grassroots. Giannis drafting him outside the top 10 and developing him into a top three player in this league. Yeah. I mean, that's outstanding. We could call the 2020 Lakers the last super team that, to win an NBA title. Possibly because that the two seasons before when they acquired Anthony Davis, that was seen as like a superstar duo right there. Uh, big three, that's not a reality. That doesn't happen really anymore. No, that's true. Anyway, uh, we might see a shift uh, as far as the NBA goes. All right, you want to talk about it? We'd love to get your thoughts on it. 505-6009, our telephone number. Enrique Ortiz getting in on the discussion via Twitter and X. With the Celtics winning a record in 18th NBA title, does that make it easier for Northeast sports? Is Boston a baseball town or basketball town? What would you rather have, the most World Series or NBA titles? It's a fascinating question. It really is. Tell you, I, know the, I know what the Yankees will tell you. Most World Series. Wouldn't even be a question, you know? Then again, the uh, NBA has, has been kind of irrelevant in New York. But let's just take, take Boston, for example. Would you call Boston more of an NBA town or a Major League Baseball town if you had to pick one of the two? Right now or all time? Both. Mm, right now, I would say basketball. I, I would say people are abandoning the Red Sox right now, as it stands right now. Uh, and all, all time, I might even go um, – you know, basketball. Right now, I would also throw football in the mix prior to the last three years. I mean, it's been more of a football versus both baseball and, you know, basketball. Understand this, though. I mean, the Celtics have been relevant since the 50s, right? The Red Sox have been relevant since the turn of the century in the 19th century. So that's really when you start to think about that, or the 20th century, I should say, the 20th century. So um, they have a longer track record, but Boston was, they weren't winning titles forever. They, they hadn't won a title since Babe Ruth all the way up until I think the, uh, was it the, the 90s? It was, it was a long way, or the 2000s yeah, actually. Yeah, 04, right? Yeah, longer, long wait. So I go Celtics. I think it's more of a basketball town than a baseball town just because the Celtics have been so good for, for over the course of all those years. They really, they won titles in the 60s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. They skipped the 90s. And then they started winning in the 2000s. We talked a lot about the Lakers earlier. What about L.A.? What, what would you say that would go? That's a tough one. Throw football out the uh, the window, right? Yeah. Because they can't uh, decide what team they want in L.A. And I, we could even ask the Cali guy over here, too. But yeah. L.A. is an interesting one right so there. So I would – okay, listen. If it was up to me, just me, I would say L.A. is a baseball town with the Dodgers. I would still put Dodgers over Lakers, although it's tough. But I would, I would still say – if you had to ask everybody in L.A., Dodger baseball would still win a popularity contest. That is that is the most unfair question of all time, Steve. I mean, I'm thinking about influence outside of L.A. I'm thinking about how much you walk around and you see people wearing certain things. I think I slightly lean Dodgers, but, I mean, tomorrow I might tell you Lakers. That's how close it is. It is close. It is really close. And, by the way, the Lakers have won 17 championships. So they've also been, just like the Celtics, dominant uh, ever since they were in Minneapolis as the Minneapolis Lakers. So they've been been great, too. But I just – I don't know. I mean, and and maybe – Maybe I'll go Dodgers because look at what they have right now. I mean, you just look at what they've done. They've they 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 built a super team. I mean, they really have. They just keep spending like it goes out of style. They don't care, and they can also put a lot more fans at Dodger Stadium than you could fit it into uh, in, into what uh, is now. It's not Staples crypto. anymore. It's crypto. now it's crypto. now crypto. crypto. Crypt, yeah, crypto.com arena. That's right. Yeah, I, I 
That's why I'm leaning a little bit of the Dodgers. I think that, you know, with what they've built in a super team, and I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking culturally here, maybe over numbers, just from being from LA and in the area, when you walk around, what do you see more of? Do you see people wearing Dodgers hats? Do you see people wearing Lakers jerseys? And it is close, uh, but I think I'm going to have to lean the Dodgers here. Just, just by a hair. Okay. Um, by the way, after Lakers and Dodgers, who is third? I mean, that's the hardest question ever because the Rams, the Raiders, in LA, in LA it's Galaxy. It's LA Galaxy. No, it's the Raiders. It's no. the 49ers or the Raiders. No, guys. Come it's on. the Rams. They had the Ibrahimovic Rams. and David Beckham. Cade. Yeah, but not no. anymore. Not anymore. Not, not, Adrian's I mean, mad at me. The Galaxy. I don't know. I mean, think about this. It's not the LA Kings. No, it's definitely not the Anaheim Angels. Thank you for that. Yes, no, I know that. Right. So not you, the you know, Clippers. Thank and it's you. not Thank the Clippers. You for that as well. That's Thank right. You. Thank you. So they're all now. You know what you could say? You could make a point that after the Lakers and the and the Dodgers, it's USC football. Good one. That's a okay, great that's, one. No, yeah. that's a good one. But I'm yeah. I I. I if we're sticking in pro sports, at least, I definitely think that it's the Rams. And I'm getting yeah. a lot of pushback from other people. You just said it was the Galaxy. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And if he just yeah. said it was the 49ers. Understood a little bit. There's a big 49ers influence. But it is the Rams, 100%. If we're going all sports, including college, do we go USC third behind Dodgers-Lakers? USC football. It's also really tough, but I still think I'm leaning to the Rams. I really am. I mean, think about their presence back before they went to St. Louis, and there's a lot of the older generation that, I mean, is diehard Rams. Rams can't even sell tickets to their own fans at their own stadium. They don't even have home games, Cade. I understand that. I, I, I understand that. But at the same time, you're, you're, you're throwing – I understand you're throwing ticket sales at me here, but I'm, I'm talking culturally here, Adrian. I'm talking what you go when you see when you walk around and, and what you see on billboards, how you see people wearing jerseys, what they decide to rep when they're talking on social media, what you see on Instagram in the stories. That's, I'm talking about more of the inner workings here. And right. I think that the culture is stronger behind the Rams than any other pro team. Um, but I think USC definitely rivals it. By the way, okay, so let's just put Rams, and then we'll talk USC. But here's the question. Best of the rest. You got Clippers, Chargers, Angels, Kings, Mighty Ducks. Like, you could basically throw them into a hat, shake it up, pull one out, and there you go. Because it's not like any of those teams really have a dedicated base over the others. Am I right or wrong there? You're probably right. If I had to choose one as far as, again, like culturally, which has the support from the city, I would as terrible as they have been, I would say the Angels. There's more Angel fans than any of those other teams that you just named in the area. More than the Kings? Probably, yes. Yes, because I think that people are just more baseball fans than they are hockey fans on a consistent basis. And so, Interesting. you know, you will see people supporting the Angels probably more than you will see people supporting the Kings. Where does UCLA fall on the spectrum? Close in the mix with probably all the rest of those. You know, that's I, w I would say it falls a little bit behind all the rest of that melting pot, but it's probably right in the mix with them as well. I was going to ask you if, I mean, but they're, but they're definitely behind USC. Correct. That's for sure. They're, they're far behind USC. They okay. are far behind USC. All right. It's a, good, uh, it's a very interesting storyline. It's, it's a very interesting topic. You could definitely get a bunch of other California people on here too, and it would be a very strong debate. Uh, last question. Most popular sports team, period. College, any sports in the state of California. Like, state of Texas, we could probably, no, we will say the Cowboys, yeah, right? there's no doubt. Uh, there's no doubt. But California, statewide, what's the team? I would actually say Lakers. I would say that Dodgers is for L.A., but in terms of all of California, I would say Lakers. You would, even though you've got the Warriors in Northern California. I would say so, yeah. There's I think, the 49ers. Yeah, yeah so I thought, I thought 49ers would probably be the, the team that most would, would side with. But how big of a following do the 49ers have in Southern California? It's, it's strong. It's strong. But, like, when, you, when, when they were playing uh, and you, there would be, you know, Niners and Rams games or things like that, like you would see, you know, 60-40 in L.A. That's, that's around what I would put it at. So okay. it was still really, really strong in Southern California. I'll say this. I once went to a Raiders-Chargers game in San Diego. Oh, here we go. 
And I would say it was like 70-30 Raiders to Chargers in San Diego. Couldn't believe it. I was looking at that crowd going, my God. The Raiders are just taking over the stadium. In San Diego? In San Diego. Rough. Yeah, it was it wasn't good. Well now you know why they're in L- now you know why they're in LA. I mean I wanted to, I think their the fan base presence was better in San Diego than it is in LA. Yeah, and that's and that's saying something, right? Yeah, absolutely. Really absolutely. Hey, right. real quick, Sean McConnell texts into the program. Clippers still have a good base because they're good. Kings are next because of the same. Ducks are after that. Angels are dead last because the state has completely given up on Artie. Yeah, I mean that's true. But I'm talking about over I'm not talking <laughs> Pops, I appreciate that. I'm not talking about right now. I'm talking about over the course of the team's history. You know, I'm not saying the Angels have been a great, you know, team in in history, but over the course of time, the support for the Angels in yep. Anaheim and throughout Los Angeles, and even outside of that, like I will still see people wearing, you know, Angel stuff and supporting the Angels outside of California. In the in the early '80s, they had Reggie Jackson, who was one of the biggest names in baseball as the face of that franchise. And you look over the years. I mean, again, Mike Trout the last dozen plus years, and now you had Shohei together. It's a shame that with all the star talent. That franchise has acquired over the years. They wasted. have nothing to show for it. Wasted. Absolutely yeah. wasted. And I could not oh, be more frustrated as a fan. Although, I think it was, was it 01 when they won the World Series and beat the 02. Giants? 02. 02. All right. So they have, at least they have a World Series to show for it. Right. I was barely born for it. So I could say I was alive for a uh, there you go. Angels World Series. You might never see another one again in your lifetime. Yeah, probably right. All right. 19 past the hour. I promised to talk about what uh, Cade was doing earlier today before he showed up. We'll do that next, right after Charlie Wan in this traffic update. Meanwhile, we've got Cade McConnell uh, sitting in with us today for the next hour. So we say hello to Tim Haggerty during our uh, final countdown to get you ready for Chihuahua's baseball. Cade has been busy. He uh, had the opportunity to uh, head someplace today that, I don't know, have you been to uh, Fort Bliss before? Is this your first trip out there to the base? First trip actually on the base, obviously driven by many, many times, but I've never actually got to go on the base or had something to go do out there. Um, But today, the entire football program, trainers, coaches, we all went down there. um, And thank you so much to the guys out at Fort Bliss that had us. We got to go do a workout uh, with some of their, you know, infantry and some of their uh, guys down there that were available and that were going to go do a workout. So we went down there. uh, They bust us down this morning. We got there by 6 a.m. It was right before the sun came up, so it wasn't too, too hot until the end. Mm -hmm. Um, But we did some really cool workout stuff. We got to kind of see what they do, how they started off in the morning by saluting the flag. They fired the cannons. Uh, and then we kind of started getting after it with some workouts. And we got a little competitive. There was a little Army versus football action. There was some mixing with it where we had teams where we kind of meshed together, um, some relay race type of stuff. And then we got to uh, kind of experience what they have to go through when, you know, we had the backpacks on with a ton of weight in them and the rucks. And we had to, you know, run a mile and a half. And we oh, had to wow. carry people uh, as if they were wounded in battle. So you had basically, you, you crammed basic training into one morning out there at Fort Bliss today. We really did, and it was a killer workout, let me tell you. And those guys are those guys are very in shape, and they are, they are used to doing stuff like that, and we are not. Um, we had, you know, one of the things we had to do was carry somebody, you know, as if they were wounded uh, around a mile and a half, and you're carrying it with four guys, but we had a 300-pound dude on there. Oh so, God. I mean, I don't know how many 300-pound guys are in the Army, but... It's not easy to carry somebody on on those. And we were running a mile and a half, and we were doing it for time, and it it was tough. It was really, really tough. I remember getting done with it, and I was like, geez, I'm dizzy right now. So wait a minute. You had to carry somebody while you were running a mile and a half. It was Chris Carter, one of our newer offensive linemen that just transferred in, I believe, from Georgia Southern. But he just transferred in. He's about 6'7", 285, 290. And you had him on your back for a mile and a half? He wasn't on the back. He was on, uh, like, I don't know exactly what it's called. I don't know if it's called a ruck. I think it's called a ruck. Uh, where it's like it almost looks like a stretcher, but it's got the handles that poke out each side, so it's got four handles on the ends. Yes. And you, we had one person on each side of that, four people carrying it, and we had also 55-pound uh, weights inside of a big backpack with more stuff in it. So we were carrying a lot of weight around today. Wow. Now, did he have to do the same thing and do the mile and a half, too, or did he just get to be carried around? He got he got half of the ride. He just got to be carried 
Uh, and then we ended up swapping him out for someone a little lighter. They let us do that after. That was nice of them. That was very nice of them because Chris was extremely heavy, which yes. is great. That's great for blocking people. It's just not great for carrying, you know, like no. over a mile. That's not that's not very fun. But it was a great workout. Um, and then we got to go in some teams and we did some different lines. And we had another sort of relay competition that was involved with different military things with weighted bags, uh, you know, army crawling and different things like that on their training, part of their training facility, uh, big turf area. So it was really cool to see. Sounds amazing. So how many hours did you spend out there at Fort Bliss? We spent about three hours out there, and then after we got done working out, we got to take a pretty cool picture with all of them with uh, the tanks lined up next to each other with the barrels of the guns crossing out of it. And then they had what they called the uh, petting zoo, which was all the different tanks and different types of artillery lined up that we got to go walk around, check out, see, and they were kind of explaining how it works, their training, different things. I got to look through uh, one piece of equipment that, for lack of a better term, it was a big scope <laughs> that mm-hmm. had, it almost looked like thermal uh type sighting yeah. it was black and white and then I, I i was looking at a car i can't even tell you how many yards away uh and it was i was looking at the honda logo like as if it was right in front of my face and it tells you the exact coordinates of where people are in the earth and things like that it was pretty cool to see there was a lot that was going on today great workout a lot of information given and it was cool just to be able to go out and kind of have a respect for each other you know they were telling us how much they loved you know utep football and and we were like thank you so much for serving our country and allowing us to come out and kind of see what you guys do. Sounds like uh, you get a whole new appreciation for the military after getting a chance to spend a day to see what their life is like training for for you know combat and everything that they're a part of you do you have a, a huge appreciation for what those guys do and you understand that they do a lot more than you know what meets the eye there's a lot of stuff that goes into what they do in the background and the other thing too is you know while you're running or while you're carrying somebody and you have a second to talk you know they're not that much older than us or they're around our age so you know it's kind of cool to see somebody that's kind of doing what you do and there's a lot of similarities between the military and the army and football and so you kind of got to bond over that and talk with some guys that you know maybe Maybe you met somebody new today and you never thought you would. Uh, nice. And it was cool to be able to go out and kind of get with them. Love that. 28 past the hour as we continue. Before we go to Sports Center, here's Louise, who joins us next on the phone lines. Louise, how are you? Happy Father's Day, brother. Happy for. How was your, your day? Beautiful? It was excellent. Thank you for asking. And yours? Well, first off, you must have had a great early start to your week because you got to celebrate a Celtics championship last night. Ooh, la Dolce Vita. La Dolce Vita, like you said it, I, I was, I've been a, a Celtic and a, cow, a Cowboy and a Yankee fan since 1960, man. Since 1960. And, and I, let me tell you, that those guys, I mean, they, I don't know if it was a perfect game, it might, might not be. But hey, man, Jason Tatum, Derek White. Jalen Brown, and what's the guy? The guy's name from uh, Dominican Republic. What is the name? Are you talking? I don't know who you're talking about, there, Luis. You talking about a player? Yeah, yeah. From, from the Dominican I, 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 Horford. It starts with an H. Uh, it's Al, Horf- Al Horford. Al yeah, Horford. I guess it's Horford. I didn't realize yeah. Al Horford's from the Dominican Republic. Yes, he is. Interesting. First player from Dominican Republic to win the NBA title. How about that? Oh, wow. Yes, sir. There you yes, go. Good sir. job. He played and he played his college ball at Florida. Kata Richard probably would have been calling in telling us he played Dominican from the Dominican Republic. That's good. Well, listen, you got an exciting team. They're probably gonna all be back next year. A lot of reasons to get uh, you know, to be ready to go for the twenty twenty five season. Yeah, yeah, I'm super I'll finish with this. Also very excited that Garrett Cole is going to start on Friday, on Wednesday, right? Yes, back on Wednesday. The Yankees could use him for sure. Well, let's hope that they beat the Orioles and start beating them tonight. And again, the best to you. We are millionaires. We have health. We, we have the best family. And blessings to your kids and to your wife and to your family. Appreciate you, Luis. Take care and enjoy that championship. And thanks for the phone call. Bottom of the hour. We got one hour to go here on Sports Talk. Before we continue, let's get right back over to Michael Plundo standing by with another Sports Center update. Past the hour as we continue. Paul Cicala will be calling in any minute. I hear they're off the air in a few, so we might get Paul to ch- chime in and uh, call the hotline and 
uh, let us know about uh, the Burger Challenge for Chilitos, which I'll be excited to hear about. Uh, again, all of our calls on the uh, show uh, appear via the Longhorn Distributing Hotline uh, here on Sports Talk as uh, we continue. Uh, meanwhile, Cade is back. Hey, you filmed a TV commercial recently for um, Wind Supply El Paso that should be coming out soon. Tell me what that experience was like for you. Oh, that was amazing. Thank you so much to the guys over at Wind Supply, both uh, to Renee and Rebecca. Both of them were awesome and the guys that came out and filmed. It was a really cool experience. It was nice. I've never filmed a commercial before, so uh, to go out and to get to represent people who love to support UTEP athletics and UTEP football was awesome, Uh, and it was cool to go out. You know, we were on the field for a little bit of it, uh, and then we were back on a different scene. I'll kind of leave it, you know, leave it at that, wait for it to come out, Um, but it was cool to kind of go and experience that, and I had a really good time doing it. Did you have a speaking role? I did. There was a couple lines. You know, I'm not giving a monologue, Steve, but I do have a couple lines in there. Do you feel like like next we'll be getting a SAG card because I understand they are filming a movie downtown. Heard that today. There's a big, big movie production downtown. Rumor has it Leonardo DiCaprio could be coming here. Whoa. Yes. That's big time. That is big time. If it's true, that is big time. Well, I'm yeah. sure I missed the casting for this, but I have said this, Steve. You could be an extra. At some point in my life. Let me tell you something. I want to be on a movie set. I, I really got, do. I got news for you. Go downtown. Go check out the set. Just look around. Let Hollywood take a look at you, and then we'll see what happens. Go from there. I would love to. I know you guys. You guys know everybody in this city. Don't you know somebody that's going to be working on that movie downtown? Nope. Not a single person. Not a soul. Adrian, do you feel, though, if if Cade just wanders down? Wait, 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 wait. I think I've got this. In the film, in the the area, Uh and just shows up, just kind of curious. Is it? And then, you know, somebody talks to him. Is it possible? Is it possible? I'm gonna say no, but I, I'll okay. I'll, I'll right. counter it with a different idea, okay? Because I think we got it, we got to approach it a different way, okay? You and I will go up full suits in 100 degree blazing weather. Like we'll it. take Cade with us. Cade is gonna go as casual as possible, and we're gonna go in like we know what we're doing. We're gonna go right um, up to them, and we're gonna say, "Oh, Cade's here." They're gonna say, "Who?" They say, "Cade McConnell." Do you really think that? The Hollywood suits are even wearing suits these days, and when it's 100 degrees outside in El Paso, don't you feel like they're probably more in slacks and a polo shirt, uh, even a T-shirt versus going full suit? You're right. That's why Cade's the casual one. We're the entourage. We're like right. the entourage around him. And so the Hollywood will see that and be like, wow, this guy, We at least let's put, put him in on an extra you think on this scene. that could be the case? I want, I want – Instead, I think we could go, I want you to take the headphones that you both are wearing right now. Mm-hmm. I want you to plug them into something or just put them in your pocket as if you have headphones on, like you're, you know, you're doing something on the set. And then I need some more camera and film type of equipment that you're going to make it look like you know exactly what's going on. You're just going to wave me through as yeah. I walk through and just. Oh, you know right. what the other idea is, right? Here's the other idea. I mean, this is a simple one. Go to the Plaza Hotel. Mm-hmm. Go hang out at the bar. For the next couple nights. Oh my god! See who Wait, walks in. Best idea. And, best and, idea. And just be yourself, be friendly, mingle, and the next thing you know, you uh, next thing you know, me you and could, Leo are just having a yeah, couple. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Then you got to call Scotty and say, "Listen, Scotty, I got a I got a bit of a problem with workouts today. I'm I got a new friend of mine that I'm going to be joining on set, and uh, you, maybe you've heard of him. You know, he's in a few uh, multi billion dollar movies, and then you go from there." Okay, here's a hypothetical. Yeah. Right? Do you think – I mean, I could probably answer this myself. I just want to know what you guys would think. Mm. I have to walk up to Coach Walden one of these mornings. Hey, Leonardo DiCaprio asked me, hey, I, we, were, we were at the Plaza Hotel. We started talking. Next thing you know, one thing leads to another. He's like, oh, there's this one scene I would love to throw you in. I'm a producer, and I'm an executive director on this film as well. Yeah. I would love to throw you in there. Let's just do this one scene. But there's workouts the next day. Is coach letting me film it? Or am I allowed to miss the workout? I would say yes. If you tell him who it's with and right. the circumstances, I think he'd give you a pass. Adrian, do you think he would or do you think oh, he would man. say no? Nebraska's right around the corner, man. That's true. It's June 18th. I don't know, man. It's June 18th. I, if we were talking December 30th or something like that or you know January 15th or something, I don't know, man. Listen. Go downtown for the next couple nights. Right. Just go hang just, out. Just, just hang out at the hotel bar. When, you know? when, do, they, when do they get here? You know? They're here already. Okay. They, they already here. blocked off all of downtown today, and they were shooting. I see. It's already here. Okay. So if I were you, that's what I would do. 
Do I know who's here yet? I don't. Right. But I've heard. I've heard that uh, we could have uh, Leo coming to town. So that's the rumor. Okay. But the point is, you know, you've got a better shot being in the right place, right time, than anything else. It's true. It's true. I want I want to close the chapter of this, you know, hypothetical real quick with I don't think that Coach Walden would let me. I would like to add on top of that that I would not miss a mandatory thing for football in order to do something that I have not committed to. Can I just what, can I just bring up one more thing though? Sure. Okay. Sure. In 1973, there was a minor league baseball player playing for the El Paso Sun Kings who was batting about I don't know, um 390. Gets hurt. Mm has a significant knee injury. Rather than rehab and continue the season, he went to his backup plan, which was acting, because there was a movie role that he was going to be getting in and decided he'll give up baseball to go uh, back into uh, into the family job. You know who we're talking about? No. Take a guess. The last time I took a guess earlier in the show, it was just, it was so off. Kurt Russell. Really? Yes. I yep. didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Oh, I yeah. I did not know that. Having a great year in El Paso when he got hurt. Great year. Not to say he could have played for the uh, the Angels or whoever they were affiliated with in those days, but there was a possibility, had he kept hitting, he would have had a chance to get up from AA to AAA and then possibly to the bigs. That's instead, awesome. Instead, he started and, and he, you know, he married Goldie Hawn, and the rest is history. So, all right. Kate, I'll, awesome. I'll tell you this. There's a lot of – there's a good track record of former college players or whomever going into uh, acting. There's Dwayne The Rock Johnson. There's mm-hmm. Burt Reynolds, Mark Hammond. Uh, there's a lot of great examples uh, of of people who have played football at one point and then go off into acting. Terry Crews is in this conversation Fred as Dreyer well. played for the Rams and became Hunter. There he you go. He was huge. All right, look. OJ. Oh, God. You had to do that, didn't you? (laughs) You had to do that. All right. Uh, We hope Cicala will be calling any minute. Let's take the break, see if we can keep him on the lines, because I know he's got a 6 o'clock news to get to, and maybe we can get Paul for a few to talk about that uh, Chilitos challenge. We'll see what happens next. The Sports Talk continues. 600 ESPN El Paso. First off, um, the strategy. I like the strategy. Uh, if you ate the fries first and then tried to eat the burger, that would be a bigger challenge. I fi- you probably figured, okay, let me knock the hard stuff out first and then try to get those fries down towards the end. Um, as the 30 minutes was expiring, did you ever consider switching gears and going to the fries and just trying to like get it all done? Or was there a point where you just knew there was you had no chance to get this thing finished? I will be triple with you. I think that I, it wasn't a time factor. I, I was pacing myself well, and by the time I got to the fries, it was probably about two minutes left. I could have crunched those babies up. I could have downed them, but I was already filling all the food up to my chest, and I don't want to gross the viewers out, but I know that had I forced down those fries in the effort of winning, I probably would have thrown up afterwards. And since I was doing a story dealing with it, that's the last thing I want to do on camera. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Paul Cicala with us right now. He's got a newscast in 10 minutes, and he just finished the four and the five. That's how busy he is right now. Um, have you ever done a food challenge before, or is this the first one? Uh, this is the first one, and, and truthfully, I was doing it more on a group of, of content creators here in El Paso. It's called Della Story, and they're on Instagram and, and TikTok, and they had done something on the Chilito Challenge that went viral and got almost a million views, so I said, all right, I'm going to do a feature story, and I do a segment called People, Places, and Pauls, where I try to find some of the positives here in El Paso, and that's exactly what they do on their site at Della Story, showing all the positive stuff around the borderland, and I figured, you know, I'm going to feature them, but since this is something that went viral, I'm also going to try the Chilito Challenge myself, and uh, I included one of, uh, one of the members of Della Story, uh, Cesar Jaquez, in it as well, so he, he was at it as well, and, you know, it, it was a good story, it was a good feature story, and if you haven't seen it, just go to KVIA.com, or, or better yet, I did an extended version on my YouTube uh, page, and all you have to do is go to YouTube and p- type in Paul Sikala, Border Reporter, and you will see that people, places, and Paul. It's lots of fun. By the way, uh, impressions of the burgers itself, because you, you, ate, you ate three pounds of meat in half an hour. Yeah, no, so how, no, was, you, how was the burger? Now, the first, the first few bites were delicious. But once you start realizing that you're trying to get that whole thing down within 30 minutes, I'd say five or six minutes into it, you, you forget about the taste, and you're just t- tasting 
saltiness and, and grease and the whole nine yards. So my suggestion is anybody and everybody should try it. And I think it's only just over 50 bucks. Think about it. That's a deal. When you have over nine burgers in, in, in one, plus that Mexican soda, all those fries, you know, you divide that up between 50. That, that's, listen, that's like only six bucks each a burger. So if you can't finish it, just take the rest home with you. I mean, it's worth it. And if you finish it, you get it free and you get on the wall. So it wasn't bad. But as you had mentioned before, I didn't really necessarily have a strategy, but I told myself I'm going to go for the burger first so at least I could brag and say I completed the burger challenge at least. Not the entire thing, but I ate the entire burger. But, you know, it was hard with those fries as well. Did you go on an empty stomach? I did go on an empty stomach. I'll give you a little secret. I was afraid it would work against me. I do that intermittent fasting stuff, so I only eat for breakfast, like a banana or something, and then I, I skip lunch every day and I eat a sensible dinner. And so I, was, I figured that my body's not used to taking in that much food and it would work against me, and who knows? I don't know the science behind it. Maybe scientifically that works to my advantage. Who knows? Because they said that, you know, I got... You know, I'm further than 90% of the people that ever try. Most people can't even complete the burger. And everybody thought I was going to finish. And they were like, do it up, do it up. When, when, those, uh, bur- when the fries were on the, on the plate, but I, in my mind, I was like, I am going to end up throwing up if I, if I force these down. But, um, you know, had there, during the original story, so to say, on, on Della Stories Instagram, they had offered $200 to the person if they could finish it as well. If I knew I was going to get 200 bucks, I, I guarantee I would have done those fries. It would have been physically f- possible, but I didn't feel like dealing with the repercussion. Yeah. I had to anchor the newscast afterwards at 10. And I'm telling oh. you, I was putting a fake smile on the entire time because I was, I was feeling it throughout the newscast. And I will admit to you, when I got home later that night, I, I could not sleep. And I, I was feeling the, the vomit, if you will. I don't want to gross anybody else out anymore, but I, I was feeling it all night and early into the next morning. I just felt super unhealthy. So um, it was worth taking the challenge, but uh, you got to be prepared for the aftermath. That's for sure. Paul Cicala getting ready to come up at 6 o'clock on the 6 o'clock news on KVIA. Will you be doing well, any hey, more? And to interrupt you, we yes. don't have a 6 o'clock because of the Stanley Cup. It's on ABC. So, so luckily, nice. we're not on until right after the Stanley Cup finals. So, ah. so I'm not good. I'm not under this crazy deadline anymore. Is uh, Will the Panthers finish them off tonight, or will we see a game six back in Edmonton? <laughs> You can answer that question more than me because I, I'm going to admit to you that, that I have not been following the Stanley Cup because usually we, we've been airing it, and then in between our 5 o'clock and then the Stanley Cup games, and then, and then we have a special version around 9 or so, I'm usually out working on a story, so I haven't had a chance to really even watch. So I'm, I'm going to guess that uh, the Panthers will finish it just because you kind of said that. <laughs> okay, well, we'll see. Well, listen, if it's like the NBA Finals, there's your answer because you saw what the Celtics did last night to the Mavs. Exactly, exactly. And, I, you know, I wanted to go seven games just because it's probably better for ratings for ABC, and I work for ABC, and, you know, we probably have a lot of carryover viewers who maybe may not always watch the newscast to keep it on after the game. So, yeah, you want the series to go seven. You hope it does, but, but we'll see where it goes. I hope you go back to Cholitos, order a regular burger, savor it, and realize, and hopefully you don't have PTSD. That's another thing is I'm always worried that, oh. you know, you might be thinking about that nine, you know, those nine patties the next time you're back there. I, you know what? I don't think I will because I know that the first few tastes were, were delicious and the fries were seasoned perfectly because I was eating some of the fries as I would go along and everything. And obviously those Mexican sodas, they're, they, to me, they taste better than the ones on this side of the border. Um, they use different sugar there and all the, the whole nine yards with the sugar cane and such. But, no, I want to go back and I want to try them. And I've heard, actually, that Chilitos is also known for their tortas, that they have really good tortas and other, uh, other sandwiches as well. So, um, no, I don't think so. And, I, and I'm actually looking forward to going back to Chilitos and, and trying one. And truth be told, because I'm such a competitive person, I might go on one of my days off where I know I don't have anything else to do, and I might try to complete that challenge again because I, I want to get up on that wall of fame because I knew I could have done it. I seriously know that in my heart of hearts I would have done it, but I know that I wouldn't have wanted to suffer the repercussions afterwards, especially when there's a camera rolling on me. What if you do an intense workout before the challenge and you burn some more calories and then you show up not only hungry but feeling like maybe you've got a little more room because your metabolism is rolling? Well, you know more about science than me then. If, if that strategically works, I will do it. I, I had no idea. I, I didn't even have a chance to really Google it because I thought, you know, okay, because I'm going on an empty stomach, I hadn't eaten lunch. But the fact that I don't eat lunch regularly, I figured it might work against me. Um, so I don't know. If you say that that helps, then I think that that is what will get me over the hump if I try that challenge again. 
I think you should try it. Try it. Paul, Paul, I'm 51 years old. I can't eat that stuff. Are you kidding me? What, I'll be. I I'll... just turned 50, my friend. I just turned 50. It's it, it's me. Somebody that you know that, that, that does the the fasting, so to say, that doesn't even eat lunch and eats a sensible dinner, only eats like a banana for breakfast. If I could get that far, I know you can too, my friend. And right. look at the eating contest too. There you I go. mean, even guys like you know Joey Chestnut, he's probably pushing mid 40s, 50. Also, they're all True. skinny too. So. So, you know, you never know. I bet you could do it if you really want it. Kobayashi just retired because of brain damage. We don't want that to be us. That that no. can't be us, Paul. So, no. Okay, no. I had no idea. Oh, I, yeah. I knew I knew that uh, there were some health uh, reasons. I didn't realize it was brain damage. That scares me now. Wow. Yeah. I don't know if I want to try it again now. By the way, a month after he said he had brain damage, he's back against Chestnut in September on Netflix doing hot dogs. So that goes to show you well, that money you know money what? will buy anything, Paul. Money will money take care talks. of anything. That's right. And speaking of money, I mean, I will say it again. At Chilitos, I think for like 50 bucks. That is not a bad deal when you consider that you have, like, nine hamburgers there. And, and if you're feeling after, you, you know, the first yeah. ten minutes you're not going to win that challenge, guess what? You have you could take all that food home with you and, you and you have lunch for a week. Or bring four friends and let them finish it after you're done eating. And you're good to go. That, that's, so. even, good. that's actually a better strategy. That's a good idea. Happy belated 50th. Good for you. We'll see you soon. And uh, always appreciate the time having you talk a little bit on the show with us. No, no. And as always, it's always an honor. I'm a big fan of your station. And even... Uh, you know, any time I would come back, even when I left El Paso, when I would come to come back to visit El Paso, I always made sure to put it on 600 AM. I'm just bummed that I don't get to listen to your show as much anymore because it's right in the heart of my work day, you know, in between our 4 o'clock and our 5 o'clock newscast and 6 o'clock newscast. So, I don't know. It's kind of tough. But uh, I'm going to have to – you're on – you have a podcast, right? I we mean, do. It's on, I can get it online, right? We, You can. You can, yes. I actually okay, talked well, about you a couple of weeks ago. I, I talked about you a couple of weeks ago when you cleared your throat in the middle of a newscast on our show. <laughs> oh, my, oh, my. Oh, my gosh. I think I remember that. Okay, I got to – hopefully I can go to your guys' website and find that so I can find the, the, the blooper, the radio blooper myself. That's, on that's, there, but, that's uh, fantastic. That, that works out and great. And we do our – and, you know, we do our, our, our reports, uh, you know, at the top of the hour, I believe, for you guys as well sometimes. So at least at least you can get those blooper free. But uh, but it's an honor to be, to be on with you, Steve, as always, and thank you for uh, having me. And uh, don't forget, if anybody hasn't seen it, seriously, it's a, it's a good, creative, fun story. You can go to kvia.com. And you have the extended story, which I think is a lot funnier, uh, on my YouTube site, which is uh, just just go to YouTube and do Paul Sikala, Border Reporter, and you will find it. Click subscribe, and you can help a brother out. I'll look forward to checking out the extended version myself tonight. And again, thanks for calling in, Paul. Good job. No, you too, man. Have a blessed day. Thanks again. Paul Sikala with us, folks, here on Sports Talk. Let's run the ID since we're at the top of the hour, and then we'll come back. Final 30 minutes next, right here at 600 ESPN El Paso. Streaming worldwide through the 600 ESPN El Paso mobile app. 600 ESPN El Paso is KROD El Paso, a Town Square media station.
Good evening, Adrian Brought us here with your Sports Center update for 600 ESPN El Paso. We're getting out to some Chihuahuas baseball here, bottom of the hour, out in El Paso, taking on the Sugarland Space Cowboys. Our very own Tim Haggerty will be on the call. We'll have you covered right here, 600 ESPN El Paso. Let's go over to some news out of baseball today. The Astros place righty Justin Verlander on a 15 day IL today due to neck discomfort. The three time young Cy Award winner was scratched from Saturday's scheduled start against the Tigers. He's 41 years old and hasn't pitched since June 9th when he allowed uh, four runs in a 9-7 loss to the Angels. The nine-time All-Star is 3-2 with a 3.95 ERA and 10 starts this season. More injury news to get to out of baseball today. Yankees first baseman Anthony Rizzo is expected to miss at least eight weeks after fracturing his right forearm. It was announced Tuesday. Rizzo, who was placed on the injured list, said that he'll probably go four or five weeks without any sort of baseball action activities. Back to the baseball scoreboard we go. A lot of games going on currently right now. Cardinals and Marlins in a great one. 7-7. End of the sixth inning in this matchup. Going over to Pittsburgh. Pit Reds up 2-0 against the Pirates. Top of the seventh of that game. Over to Philly. Uh, actually the Phillies up 1-0 against the Padres. Bottom of the fifth of that matchup. Over to the Mariners who have a 6-1 advantage over the Guardians at the bottom of the fifth. Bottom of the fifth out in D.C. as well. Diamondbacks lead the Nationals 4-0. Yankees up 1-0 against the Orioles at the bottom of the third, and that one is on TBS as the nationally televised game of the night. That's us look at your Sports Center update. I'm Adrian Broaddus. From the 600 ESPN El Paso, River Oaks Property Schoolyard Sports Studio, here's Steve Kaplowitz and Adrian Broaddus. Back here on Sports Talk as we continue final 20-plus minutes on the show. Loved having Paul Sikala on. Spent the last five minutes talking about how he cleared his throat in the middle of a radio broadcast with us, and he started laughing, talking about it. He's like, I remember it! I remember it! He goes, oh, you know, he's just talking about being on deadline and stuff, and we're having a good time. It was, it was fun. I can't believe Paul Sikala is just a year younger than me. Man, I'm telling you. Uh, he looks good, and um, he tried that burger challenge, nearly finished it. I have a feeling Cade's going to do it. I mean, the more you sat listening to that interview, the more I think you're doing the challenge. I feel like I feel like it's just a good challenge, number one, but I feel like number two, like he said, it's not a bad deal. No, it's a good deal. So if you go and get it and you don't finish it, number one, like he said, you could take it home, or you can go there and you can have people around you to assist. You That's know right. what I mean? That's right. So I think that, the, I mean, I want to go to Chalitos really bad anyway now, and now I want to try the challenge because good. now I feel like I'm up for it, and I'm really hungry right now, so I'm, I'm getting a little more confidence in myself. By the way, I'm curious about this because you mentioned you know going this morning, working out with uh, the team out of Fort Bliss and some of the things you're doing this summer. Um, how many days do you work out every day of the week, or do you only work out, let's say, five of the seven days? What's what's your schedule like right now? Like actual working out with the team, it is five days a week. Usually, it ends up being six because on Saturdays I'll do something. But I mean, that's not truly a workout. We we truly work out and you know do a a real tough day Monday through uh, through Friday, yeah. and some of those are voluntarily player led stuff. Um, and that we do on our own, yeah. uh, but it's Monday through Friday that we do those, you know, real hardcore. And then Saturday is usually a take care of your body day for me. Try to try to get it right for to go back on Monday. Any chance you might uh, skip out in the next couple of weeks and go to Egypt for a ayahuasca uh, session and just kind of blow things off a little bit for the for the summer workouts? Yeah, I don't think I have that much pull, um, so I'm going to have to pass on that one. Uh, but it does sound adventurous. What's your take on what Aaron Rodgers is doing with the Jets and saying he's missing the mandatory camp? He's gone. To every voluntary camp since he's been there. But this one, which was the actual two or three day mandatory camp, said that he already he's already gotten permission to skip out and miss because he's out in Egypt and somebody claims it's something with a ayahuasca uh you know uh thing. 
Here's the thing. I there's part of me that says that the tenure of Aaron Rodgers and what he's been able to do, you get to do and have you know great exceptions like that. Um, and there's the other part of me that says that if you're going to be a leader of a team, then you know I don't remember Brady missing anything like that. Yeah. You know I don't remember Brady missing any mandatory time. I remember him being there even when it was voluntary. So I guess at the end of the day, no one's going to remember whether or not he missed uh, the you know three day mandatory camp if yeah. they are going to the playoffs this year. So uh, we're talking about it now we won't be talking about it if they're in the playoffs. Let's talk about something that's even more bizarre and weirder than this, okay? If you can imagine. What's weirder than your starting quarterback going to Egypt and uh, skipping out on uh, mandatory camp? How about a former NFL head coach at 70, 72 years of age who's dating a 24-year-old former cheerleader? Let's talk about Bill Belichick and what he's doing right now. Bill, I mean, <laughs> she watched him during the roast at Tom Brady's roast and yeah. uh, like what she saw. Is that we're going? Apparently, well, you heard what Rob Gronkowski you heard that joke at the roast, right? Yeah, I did. He's I did. scouting oh, the right. high schools. Well, that's I mean, right. so Gronk knew he was dating that twenty-four-year-old because that joke was a was a line that nobody at the time really picked up on. But now, uh, a couple of weeks later, everybody realizes why Gronk made that joke to uh, Belichick. Have we found out? Uh, have we seen who it is yet? Can you oh see? yeah, she's a twenty-four-year-old cheerleader. I yeah. haven't, I haven't seen, I haven't seen yet. I need, I need to go and just, find out. Uh, I'll just, send this to you. Yeah, just you know, search Bill Belichick's girlfriend. Look at, look at Bill. Back. Look at Bill. By the way, uh, just out of curiosity, Alberto. Uh, for, before we go to Alberto, and I want to go to the one guy that I know will give me a great answer, Michael Plundo. Michael, give me your thoughts on seventy-two-year-old Bill Belichick dating a twenty-four-year-old former cheerleader. I'm going to be honest, Steve. This is the first I'm hearing about this. I did not hear about this prior to the show or anything. I just uh, I'm talking with Adrian about it. So I'm still in shock and disbelief about this because I thought this was just a you know silly little rumor that someone made on Twitter. I didn't actually take it seriously, but uh, I'm kind of in awe right now. But I mean, hey, good for Bill. I mean, she's a cheerleader, so you know. Okay, so you you had no idea, but now you've decided after looking at this. Uh, I mean. You've seen this, so you're you're okay with it, you know. I'm I'm all right with it. I mean, you know. By the way, according to a report from Fox News, so we don't know if this is really true, but the rumor is his girlfriend Jordan Hudson, they've been dating for quite some time, but apparently, uh, their first meeting ended with Belichick writing a note in her college textbook. How about that? How I about, saw this. Yeah. How about that pickup line? Just uh, my goodness. Yes, he said back in 2021. So this is what three and a half years ago. Jordan, thanks for giving me a course on logic. Safe travels is what he wrote. I was unfamiliar with his game, man. And then he puts the Super Bowls underneath. So apparently, <laughs> 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 apparently the uh, listen to this. Apparently the two met. On an airplane to Boston. At the time, Hudson was attending Bridgewater State University, roughly 20 miles from Gillette Stadium. But the following year, after Belichick's breakup with Linda Holiday, they became romantically linked. They chatted up, started exchanging contact information, and Belichick was spotted at a cheerleading competition in support of Hudson at National Harbor, Maryland. Wow. A supportive boyfriend. Wow. What a guy. What a guy. What a guy, right? She was also a supportive girlfriend. She had uh, apparently attended all the 2021 and 2022 games for the Patriots. That I did not know. Wow, I didn't know that either. So Secretly, she did. She Got stayed it. with him even after those seasons. Adrian, uh, any, uh, any issues at all with uh, Belichick dating a uh, 24-year-old? Why would you? Why would you have? I mean, hey, I was unfamiliar with this game. Um, you know, this is this is what you want to do during retirement. Go public with your relationship. Go for it, man. I hear you. It's funny. I was talking on uh, Buzz's show this morning, and he said, and Buzz is a, a few years older than I am, and I already told you I'm 51, and Buzz said he could never see himself dating a 24-year-old because, as he put it, he just doesn't think that they would be developed physically and mentally like some of the older ladies that he would like to go after. So he needs like drama or like he needs like somebody know. with baggage or I something mean, like that? Like what is he it, saying? Maybe that's what it sounds like. 
Oh, Kate, Kate and, and Alberto can't <laughs> stop laughing. You guys. Alberto, don't you almost want to go on Buzz's show tomorrow and, and, and ask him about that? Yeah, what do, what do you mean they're not physically, <laughs> they're not, what do you mean, Buzz? What do you mean by that? Yeah, I Just mean. Just ask him that. What, what do you I, I don't know. I mean, that? 24 is, I mean, you, you would figure that, you know, I don't know how much more development they would have after 24. Do you? <laughs> My goodness. No, do no. you? No, but I mean, hey, Bill didn't miss. He didn't miss. No, I think he did a good job. Yeah. Kicked right through the uprights. No, yeah, we're, I'm giving yeah. him props. All right. Good she stuff. looks like mature for her age. She was, it was a logic class. Right. It was a logic class. Like it was, well, it, first off, I don't know. I mean, they're on a plane together, so maybe they, maybe she was studying logic in a textbook, and Bill was giving was uh, was giving her some logic tips. Could be the case. Probably. By, yeah. by the way, twenty four is young, but it's not like young young. Like that's yeah. that's 19. out. I mean, that's out of yeah. college. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I you get could it. even be working on a master's. Right. Like so that's it's like, yeah. You're it's not. A, it's not super young. Right. No. Eighteen, nineteen. No. Twenty even. That's like whoa. Even like twenty one, that's still like on the younger side. Like twenty four is like post college age. Yeah, you know, yeah, I understand. I just was curious to get your thoughts on this. We'll get we'll get Haggerty's thoughts on this in a little bit because oh. Tim is from the Boston area, so I really want to get his thoughts on uh, what Bill Belichick is doing. You know, all of us want to hear what Hags has to say about this. How, this is going to be this is going to be great stuff. How old's Hags? Hags is probably just over forty. Okay. So, yeah, he'll, he'll be able to weigh in on this. Okay. So, all right. More in a moment as Sports Talk continues. First, let's get one last traffic update from Charlie One.